You are listening to Elevated State English Language Podcast, podcast about all things cannabis business with Kitty Shopaka, Elevated State CEO and Highland Network team of advocates. Hi, you're with me again with Elevated State English Language Podcast. Um, and how shall I say it? Um, with the current situation of the COVID virus that's going around, spreading throughout the whole world, I'm actually feeling um, really cooped up and slowly, actually not slowly, I've been going crazy for a, a fair while now um, during this whole situation. Um, I think let's just start this one with a, a quick, um, say, situation update. Um, how shall I say, we're in Thailand now, we're still under um, the emergency decree. It was supposed to end um, today, but they're extending it until the end of um, May. Not sure when um, international travel will start, but domestic travel right, um, will start, I think it's already kind of started, um, or about to start tomorrow. and. No, not tomorrow, the day after, the, like the 1st of May. Um, so it seems like um, even though with the emergency decree still in place, places are going to be slowly opening. Um, fun and alcohol is still going to be on the ban. Um, yes, yes. The, um, Bangkok, um, Thailand actually, um, has been banning alcohol sales since... Um, the Songkran Festival, actually before that, before um, I think like the 10 or the 12, I don't remember, it's been so long, um, until now. And I think they're going to open up um, sales of alcohol on the 1st and on the 2nd, just for two days, so that you could go out and stockpile. Um, and then more than likely they will start it all over again for God knows how long. Um, but yeah, that's the current situation update. Unfortunately, there is no um, cannabis news, cannabis related um, business law and um, you know any sort of news like that. That is kind of worthy. Actually, there's no cannabis news at all except for um, arrests the usual. Um, so that's the that that's the sucky thing about this whole situation right now because like many things that are supposed to be moving is not moving um, and we're just kind of stuck in this limbo um, especially with the hemp law and Gratom that is supposed to come along and as well as um, cannabis itself um, too so like um, everything seems to kind of be on is currently on hold and there's nothing that we can do about it but it doesn't actually mean that i got nothing to you know share with you guys so um we're gonna veer off a little bit um in regards to uh the topic of the day um not too businessy but like technically you can you know you can make anything a business topic so how you think outside the box with the information, that's what you do with it. But um, today I'm actually going to be talking about the um, cannabis use in Thai culture that is more than medical use. So um, shockingly, um, Thai cannabis use or um, in terms of like um, how Thai cannabis, how cannabis pays a part in Thai culture it's not just the Thai traditional medicine that it's used in. Um, there are other use that um, it is, you know, considered part of the culture and um, regarding cannabis here in Thailand, um, I'm totally going to ignore the whole Thai traditional medicine. It's not because that I don't think it's important. It's more of a, there are a lot of better experts um, that can actually talk about this than me. Um, and my actual, you know, deep interest in um, cannabis in itself, um, especially with Thailand, is actually more on the cultural side or the, the social side, um, the viewpoint or the perspective of um, um, 
people on cannabis itself. So um, the other two, uh, it's one topic, but um, I'm actually going to bring up um, two different um, uses that um, that is actually traditionally known to be used in Thailand. Um, one of them is food, and the other one is um, recreational use or actually using it for you know like an end of day um, relax thing like a, you know cracking a cold one <laughs> well so in itself um, the food um, how cannabis is actually using it is actually very different from how um, the Western country actually use cannabis in food we don't actually use the buds or the flower in the food itself. Um, we tend to use the actual leaves or a whole plant. But um, in terms of the whole plant, it's actually a male plant. So not, not no female plant. It's actually, I usually use um, in actual cooking, um, just the leaves. Um, I actually do find that um, it's like it's totally different and totally opposite because like um, if any of you actually had edibles before um, you will know that there's this green grass taste and smell to it um, and no matter how high-end how expensive or whatever it is if it's made from the actual like say the cannabis oil um, that is not just, you know, pure THC or pure CBD. Um, you can always, like even at like the teeny, tiny, slightest bit, can always taste that greenness. Um, I'm not so sure that I like it because as a avid eater, um, it's just one of those tastes that I don't actually really like. But at the same time, it's like, it's, when you have it, you know that it definitely has cannabis in it. So um, in Thai food, um, we actually use the leaves. And one of the menus that um, that is the same nationwide is actual chicken soup. And it's not like, you know, not like any old, your mom made it for you chicken soup when you were sick type of thing. Um, this is like, chicken soup with cannabis <laughs> so um actually it's kind of almost like tom yum because like the ingredients in itself um, is actually very simple it's cannabis leaves a chicken um, or how many of a chicken that you want um, and there's galango and garlic and cafe lime leaves and lemongrass uh, what else is that i think that's pretty much it like it's almost like a tom yum um, or tom kha gai, um, but without the actual um, coconut milk and it's just you know a simple soup you normally put lime and um, and fish sauce in there for taste and a little bit of sugar and that's pretty much it um, that is a menu that is known nationwide like you know the Thai chicken soup with cannabis in it and um, but at the same time with each um, not just not provinces that's a little bit much like um, each different uh, parts of Thailand like the north the south and like the northeast um, all the different parts of it actually have their own um, menus that actually has cannabis leaves in it um, I went down south and I actually um, had a taste of a really, really yummy curry. So um, it was actually made from young jackfruit um, that has been boiled and with uh, grilled fish. So like um, it's almost like a mackerel, um, if I can recall. But like um, it was literally caught the day before, uh, not the day before, the morning of um, while the chicken was kind of um, literally were alive the day before um, it was absolutely wondrous to eat even though um, the, the curry itself is like it's really yummy um, even though I don't actually eat spicy food yes I'm a horrible Thai um, 
I don't actually eat spicy food at all. Um, but this, I actually made an exception. It was wondrous and it was something that you can't find anymore. And it's kind of slowly um, becoming like disappearing because of the law. So um, with each different part of Thailand, um, there's actually different sets of menus and soups and whatnot that they actually use cannabis as just a herb. It it's kind of seems like back in the days, the lady of the house um, actually view it just as the holy basil or the basil that we use a lot or lemongrass or coriander. Um, and cannabis was just but another um, herb that you use in cooking. And it's actually, because it's only used the leaves, it doesn't really do anything in terms of effects. There's hardly any THC in there, um, so you're definitely not gonna get high. But the properties of the leaves in itself actually um, has this flavor enhancing ability. So whatever food that you put it in, it's kind of almost like you're adding in MSG. Um, it makes it taste so much yummier and it makes you want to eat more of it. So it seems like to be kind of almost like an, um, an appetite um, increaser, enhancer as well. I think that's the right word. Um, so that in itself is like a very weird, um, the old traditional use. Um, more, most of the time it's actually um, the chicken soup would only happen if they found a male plant um, within the grow that's normally in the backyard. So um, it's actually kind of um, some, it's kind of interesting to know that it used to be just a part of everyday life. And unfortunately, um, things took a change and um, and this is kind of where we're at now. So um, another use that um, that was actually known um, in you know in the Thai traditional cultural sense is actually recreational use as well. Yes we do use cannabis recreationally because um, we actually use the bong, the bamboo bong. Yes that word actually came from a Thai word um, bong which meant bamboo bong because like um, back in the I think it came in it started around 1970 so it's pretty much around the um, the Vietnam era um, but before then um, the bong wasn't known as a bong it was actually known as a water pipe um, so that being part of um, now the cannabis culture um, is something that's actually really um, cool to know um, that Thailand used to be like probably a very avid um, user of cannabis in the recreational sense. Um, it's gotten to the point where, um, uh, here's a funny story actually, um, I actually have a funny story for you and it's actually t all ties in into how cannabis actually used recreationally. Um, when I was telling my mother that I was going to get into this whole cannabis business thing, she actually told me a really funny story about my great grandmother. So apparently back in the days, way before the Vietnam, um, she was literally a seller. Yes, she sold cannabis and, um, and it's not just selling cannabis. I'm, not sure whether she grew them as well like that was kind of left unknown um, so I don't know where she got the cannabis from but um, I knew that um, she used to sell them and not just selling them she also um, processed them so um, Thais actually know of like um, honey cannabis so um, because how we tend to dry the cannabis here out in the sun, we have high heat, high humidity, so tend to dry it a little bit more um, than how it should be. But um, way to, uh, to rehydrate it and actually make it nice and smooth 
and taste nice um, for the bong is to actually um, have it um, in honey. So they call it like honey roasted cannabis. Yeah, honey roasted cannabis. Um, and it's actually very simple to make. Mama was telling me like how my great grandmother used to make them. Like she'll lay them out and like, you know, it'll be dried enough and then she'll spray the honey onto can the cannabis, turn it over, do the same thing on the other side and then sell them um, in front of her house because it was along the way back home um, for most of the farmers that, or the, especially the rice farmer that's actually nearby. So like they have to walk past the house to go to their home. So this is literally like picking up, it's kind of almost like picking up beers on the way home from work. So, but with cannabis. So um, with that, back in the days, they didn't have any spray bottle or anything that they can use to kind of spray it. So, and it's kind of considered like um, norm back in the days as well for, you know, if you want to spray something on s something else, you literally put that particular thing that you want to spray into your mouth and then just spit it out through your teeth and you know that fine mist yeah that's what my great grandmother did with the honey and the cannabis so um long story short she was not just a dealer she's also um i wouldn't call it a dealer i would say a seller she could probably like a mini dispensary on a mat in front of um her house um, selling to farmers on the way back, um, but she also processed them. <laughs> so um, with regarding that, um, it's actually traditionally uh, used by the actual farmers themselves. And I'd rather say um, it's used for relaxation or like a, you know, like a muscle relaxant or like, you know, the end of day, you know, wind down type of thing rather than um how shall i say just you know used to get stone and you know give the whole that that propaganda stigma that everyone has of like oh you're using it and you're lazy um it's actually um it was kind of funny my mom was telling me that like they'll come home they'll they'll leave the field they'll go past my great grandmother's little dispensary pick something up go home eat some food and they will probably circle up with all the other males and um, smoke a round of the bong and then go to sleep. And then the next day they wake up, they go to the field, they work on the field, they come and it repeats. So that's pretty much just like the cycle of um, farmers. And that's kind of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And the funny thing about it is, it's still like that. This is, um, the farmers in Thailand still actually do that. But instead of um, gathering around a circle, passing along the bong, it ended up being um, gathering around a circle and drinking moonshine. So it seems like we've kind of moved from cannabis, which is, probably a lot safer than moonshine onto moonshine even though their um, their behavior hasn't really changed but that's the thing though um, it seems like uh, with the two things that are raised up um, women seems to be behind it and seems to be okay with the whole um, how shall I say the whole cannabis use um, meaning back before the Vietnam War back before the propaganda, back before Nixon. Um, they actually, you know, it's just another herb that's used in food. And also it's just something that um, the male or, you know, people use it to relax, even though they smoke it. It's just not something that is considered frowned upon. It's just, one of those things that is part of life 
And it seems like um, until we can actually convince these women in this day and age, like the grandmothers, the moms, the aunties, um, you know, to actually get on board and go back and have that same thought of, of perspective of cannabis like back in the days, we're going to be moving really slowly towards legalization because without them, decision won't be made or it won't be as fast. And yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that um, still, like I said, it, Rome wasn't built in a day and baby step, but keep on going. So I hope you like um, my stories and um, things that I've um, collected over the years in terms of um, stories and knowledge about cannabis. Um, next week, hopefully I'll come up with something to talk about because like I said, I'm, I'm going a little, I'm going a bit cray cray. Um, and also without access to pretty much anything, like, yeah, anything. Um, I can't even go out after 10 o'clock if I want chocolate, okay? So, going crazy over here. Um, until next week, thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Bye.